I'm Tuck. And I'm Lenny Ben. Join us as we turn our Catalina 30 into our new dream home. And set sail on the adventure of a lifetime. Alright guys, we're back at the boat this weekend. So, actually not a whole lot to do today. This weekend, is it? Nope, I went and did some provisioning. Yeah. Figure if we're coming to the boat so much, I might as well keep some staples on here so we can quit toting them back and forth. Done a little bit of loose ends, you know, boring stuff. Been in the comments, I've been getting a lot of questions and how this motor set works and how the setup is. If you go back to some of the videos, I was uh, kind of going through it a little bit fast, but this week what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this whiteboard and I'm going to draw out a schematic and then I'm going to show you the motor and how everything runs. Um, that way you can do this yourself. Basically a walkthrough on what you did, right? Yeah. I'm going to do a walkthrough on what, what we did. That way it's easy. Like we were saying in the previous video, this is about a $1,500 setup. If you were to use 100 amp hours of batteries, you could do that for around a thousand. So, you know, you could essentially do this for like 2,500 bucks. And that would save a lot of old boats. Now, I'm not gonna say go cruising with just 100 amp hours of battery, but you could just if you're you got an old boat you're at the marina or any of that stuff then you could literally just go in and out on 100 amp hours of battery we did and without the solar you could just use a charger there are two boats on this dock that are electric that have no solar they just have a charger they take they take the boat out they go sail and they come back and it's a it's a cheap setup not going to be much sailing this weekend because it's a whole lot windy, so I don't have to. I don't have to go out in this mess. I'm, look at the water. You can see the water even. I don't. Know if you could go sailing right here in the marina today. Yeah, that's what we're into this week. Just some cleanup stuff. Stick along for the ride or the shit show. All right, guys. So this is the schematic that I drew up of how all of this goes together. I'm, I'm not an artist. I'm a mechanic. So. Um, bear with me now this motor that i have will run off 36 volt or 48 volt but um, our solar and everything run off of runs off of 48 volts so that's what we used so showing here here's your negative and here's your positive of your battery bank it comes to your fusible link that comes right here now let's follow this down this fusible link from there goes to the solenoid. Then from the solenoid, we're gonna to go to the controller. This wire gets shared, so it goes from the solenoid to the controller, solenoid to the motor, and then that's where it stops. Your solenoid or your contactor also has a negative side and it has a positive side that runs off of this system also. It, and it runs off your key switch that, or your micro switch. Either way that you want to set this up. I ran mine off the micro switch. So this negative here runs over to the controller. There's a spot for it. And then if you see the positive side, I brought it down and I come all the way across and I hit the micro switch that's on the throttle. That way, when I pull the throttle all the way off, it shuts down the motor. So we're looking at the controller. The controller has a negative side, just as it has a positive side. From the battery, we're gonna run the negative all the way across, and it's gonna hit the negative side of the controller. Then, this negative comes all the way across and it hits the motor. So then we have the throttle. The throttle will come with a a micro switch and it doesn't have to have one but the one that I use came with a micro switch and it has a two wire that's just a basically this thing's just a, a resistor 
and then the controller has a spot for it there. So you'll run those two wires to the controller and then the micro switch will control the solenoid. That comes off of the key switch. That's how this gets powered. So when you turn on the key switch, it powers the micro switch. When you release the micro switch on the throttle, it in turn comes and turns on the solenoid. Then the key switch also comes back around and it hits the controller and it turns on the controller also. It's that simple. That is the setup on this. I wish someone had a drawn even the hillbilly style of one of these. That way I could see this. Altrax has um, some schematics, but then just for their controller, but then you have to figure this out. But I hope this helps everyone. I've had so many comments that people are like, can you draw this out or can you give us something? Well, I'm not an artist, but that's the best I can do with it. And then I'm going to show you this real quick um, how this works and how simple that it really is because I want you to be able to have options. This is a, an 11,000 pound boat. The motor is a 10kw and basically and it's variable because this motor will put out 11 horsepower when it starts and then it can go all the way up to 23 horsepower just depends on how how hard you feed this thing so this would move probably a 40 foot boat it just depends on you know your boat size but the thing is is there's a lot of boats out there that need motors and you know you can get these old motors for ten twelve thousand dollars if you want to go to Yanmar or, or Universal or Kubota and and I'm not knocking those. If you want a diesel, that's perfect. But for 2,500 bucks, you can get your boat back. Also in the comments, I've been um, asked a lot of questions about how long will the, the system last and how long will the motor run. I'm gonna show you the monitor. I hooked up another one here in the cabin of the boat. That way I can see here and we can see outside also. I do have this thing hooked up to shore power right now, but it does tell me exactly what I'm drawing. I'll show you, I have the heat on. We have this refrigerator, it, it kicks on and off and so does the one back there. I have the lights on, Starlink's on. Let me show you, this is my battery monitor. So it shows I have 280 amp hours and I'm at full capacity. If you look right there, this thing is running. It's drawing 6.2 amps. When I kick the motor on, that it just that varies. I can run it at 3.5 all the way up to 10 amps if I want. But let's do the math from our previous video, or just say we give it four amps. At, the motor's drawing when I'm just cruising in and out of the marina. That's about 10 amps. With 280 amp hours without any charging at all, if you do the math, that's 28 hours that this battery bank will run this boat. That's pretty good because I've got the 1,000 watts of solar. So in the daytime, even going out, if I have 600 watts or if I have 800 watts, I'm still on the good in the solar. And I have a gen set. Hopefully I don't have to use it very much. But in the same aspect, if I do need to, when I get down to 50, 40% or whatever, I just fire up the old generator for a little while and let it charge up again. That's what we were aiming for is to make sure that this boat will run a long time and we're not just out stranded and in misery when we're either on anchor or we're trying to motor somewhere. Let's follow what I've done with drawing that I made because it's important that you get this right and it's simple. Let's go turn this thing on. Turn the key switch on. This wire is your positive wire. This is your negative wire. Let me get a light so you can see this. I know this is all technical but this is simple. 
remembering the drawing from here to your fuse so this is your positive side coming right out of your battery bank and it goes to your fusible link here and then it comes up from here out of the fuse to solenoid this is just a battery monitor all right so now remember battery positive over i have run this wire here is to the battery monitor also see this little wire it runs to the fusible link which works that key switch so it goes up to the key switch back there and then it comes back out of this harness the key switch works the controller the solenoid there it has a negative and it has a positive okay the controller has a micro switch and then it has its resistor. We follow this back around. It comes right back up to your controller. So this is the, the lead coming out of the, the throttle box to the controller right here. These two wires. It has a space for it. Then the negative, it also goes right here. And then remember this is your key switch the key switch also runs the micro switch this positive right here is off of the micro switch now there's your negative from your battery bank up here there's your negative it runs around and hits this side of the motor off of your solenoid or your contactor you can actually use just a, an on and off switch like a battery disconnect I recommend this better but from here it runs to the motor and then this wire is shared all the way back down and over to the controller it's that simple it really is that simple can you imagine the boats that could be saved using this setup just like I was saying even if you just only ran a hundred amp hours of battery this thing will get this boat in and out of the marina for like maybe four amps now you're, we're not going fast we're not going whole, whole speed but we are going at a rate that we can get in and out if I bump it up to a whole speed I'm going to pull probably eight to ten amps I still have a lot of batteries so think about the math you have a hundred amp hours of batteries you're pulling 10 amps that's pretty well whole speed on a 11 to 15 thousand pound boat you've got close to around 10 hours that's not too bad I don't think you want to go that far with it but you could if you had to that's with no charge no solar no shore input any of that it's a pretty good deal just make sure I took out that gimbal stove for a reason if you're a weekend sailor or even if you're you're cruising and you want to go completely off grid or you have no solar and you just charge your stuff with a generator it still works that's the main thing but you know I just wanted to follow up I've had so many comments and that's exactly how you wire this up and you know what guys just be safe and think outside the box it doesn't have to be all that complicated so let me show you it working off of that we've got a lot of wind today but key switch is on all i do because the micro switch is connected to this throttle through the cable down there and the motor's running right there can't beat that let's go down in here there's your motor just sitting there running i love this thing can shut it down there's no warm-up to this i don't have to try and get everything going in our previous video you've seen i sailed right into the channel 
we were drifting right against the island I wasn't worried about it I wasn't worried about whether this is going to start or any of that stuff I just hit a key switch and the lever and we're going yeah guys this is a pretty pretty cool deal I did go ahead and mount some more brackets there you can see I have the rubber bushings right here then it bolts right there just simple stuff and here's the thing if i can do this anybody can do this but i hope the video helps i hope uh, my artwork i know how terrible it was but hopefully if you get into something like this you can save that a uh, steel shot or whatever and, and refer to it it does work you see it work and yeah just be safe with it guys also I wanted to just add this is connected to the gearbox if you hadn't seen how I done that go back to one of the previous videos it, it shows how I done that I've also been thinking about making a universal plate and the coupler to make this work that way people don't have to use or buy that belt pulley system I've had a lot of comments that people are having problems with that. I'm not saying it's a bad system, but this is so much simpler. And if you, if I build this plate to where you can bolt your clutch to it and then cut the shaft on your motor and then within an hour, just almost a plug and play deal. If anyone's interested in something like that or if they want to see how that works, put down in the comments because I'm going to build a couple of them just take with me because you never know what I come up on if I come up on a boat that needs a motor you know how Tuck's going to do this for 1500 bucks I can put a motor in it and then some batteries you could go to Walmart and buy four deep cycle batteries for 400 bucks I'm not saying that that's the best way to do it but you could just to get it in and out of the marina or or get a boat alive again yeah guys if you're interested in something like that interested in and in needing one of those you can always email us at tuck and lenny ben sailing at gmail.com get with me and i don't care where you're at i can get it shipped i'm a ups driver so yeah guys don't um don't let an old boat or don't let something like this be a catastrophic deal if your motor goes bad there are there are solutions is it the normal solution no it's not but it's a solution and this is safe there's no smells there's no anything and it works and it's quiet gotta love that but all right guys thanks for joining the shit show again